How is it that these nuts and bolts are gonna save you from a ton of headache and possible accidental damage to your Porsche's brake system? I'm gonna tell you why these are worth their weight in gold and why you need to get them if you like to change the brakes a lot on your Porsche, so keep watching. <laughs> These are part of the Terret Caliper Stud Kit. They also make a stud kit for your brake line bracket. And anybody that changes their brake pads a lot because you go to the track a lot needs this setup. Why? Well, in another video, I discussed the idiosyncrasies of the GT4's brake setup here. And one of those things, something that can really mess you up is that you have an aluminum upright or knuckle and the brake caliper is bolted in with steel bolts and so is the brake line bracket. Well, those steel bolts are very likely to jack up the threads in that aluminum upright. It's soft, that's just how it can happen, especially the brake line brackets because the bracket's kind of springy and it's really hard to align the bolts and then there's tension on them. I can't tell you how frustrating it is. And although changing out your brake pads should be fairly straightforward with just those four bolts, it turns into a much longer job oftentimes because you can't get the bolts back in because the threads are getting all jacked up. And once you ruin those threads, well, now you've got bigger issues. You either have to repair them or replace your entire upright, which is costly. Not only the part, but the labor, right? So what's the solution? Because cross-threading is a risk every time you put a bolt in, how about we just do it once? And you do that by installing these studs instead of bolts. They're held in with Loctite, and once you have those studs on, all you have to do is hook your caliper back onto the studs and top it off with these nuts. Same thing with the brake line brackets, which is my favorite one. All you gotta do, hook the brake line bracket back on the studs, top it off with the nuts. So simple, folks. These stud kits are available for all of these Porsche models and you can get them at Terret.com. I'll have a link down in the description. Just pick the right stud kit for your car. It's $149 for each axle, so about 300 bucks to do your whole car with the caliper studs. And those are definitely worth it. I can tell you that because the cost of fixing one mistake is gonna be a lot more than that. And you don't wanna be that guy stressed out at the track, changing out your brake pads, and then you can't get a bolt in, and now you can't even drive home because you can't get your brakes together. It's terrible. However, if the $300 is too much for you, I absolutely say you have to buy the brake line bracket kit. Save you the energy, save whoever's working on your car the energy of dealing with those stupid brackets. It's only $25 folks and one brake line bracket kit covers the entire car. And just for transparency, I bought this entire kit. Terrett did give me a little discount because I told him I was gonna make a, a video on it. They didn't tell me what to say. I don't make commissions on the sales. You can buy your own kit at terrett.com, link in the description. Now it's time for the detailed install so I can show you just how easy it is to save a ton of headache and a ton of money. Install them once and you're done. For this job, gather these tools, T55 Torx for the rear caliper bolts, 10 millimeter internal hex for the front caliper bolts, 10 millimeter socket to remove brake line bracket bolts, a 17 millimeter socket and a 17 millimeter wrench of some type to do the two nut method on installing the caliper studs. You'll need a 12 millimeter, 12 point, not six point socket to install the caliper stud nuts. A T30 Torx was helpful in getting the rear caliper back on and a three millimeter internal hex to install the brake line bracket studs. I found a small extension was also helpful. And although not required, I highly suggest a thread chaser kit. This will make the install go much smoother. More on that later. You will of course need a torque wrench and all the tools necessary to lift and remove the wheels. I also suggest a bucket and perhaps hooks to hang the calipers while you work. Anytime you're working on the brakes, be sure to first open up your reservoir. Uh, this will allow you to move the fluid when needed to push the pads back. And we'll start here on the front. With the GT4 and the 991 GT3s, the first thing you need to do is loosen the brake line bracket. There's a 10 millimeter bolt there and one over on the other side of the knuckle. Once those are off, it allows a lot more freedom of those brake lines and it's the only way that you're gonna allow that caliper to move off the rotor. You can see the loose bracket here. The rear also has 10 millimeter bolts, but they're on the top section here. And it's those 10 millimeter bolts that we're gonna be replacing with the studs from the brake line kit. 
I'll use my method of gently prying back the pads, easiest way in my opinion, while it's still on the car. Next, remove your two 10 millimeter internal hex or Allen key bolts that hold the caliper on. But remember, once these bolts are out, the caliper is free to slide down, so be ready to catch it and set it down on your bucket or hang it if you have a way to do so. This will no longer be a problem once you install the stud kit. As you move the caliper, be sure that any movement is being flexed on the soft brake lines and not the hard ones. It's essentially the same process in the rear, but these are T55 Torx bolts instead. To push the pads, I usually just use my fingers here on these parts. Remember, this is just an abbreviated procedure. You want to check out my other video for important details. Removing the rotors isn't required, but it does give you a little extra access, and I'm replacing my rotors at this time. As I mentioned in my brake change tips video, you want to chase the threads on all of these holes to make sure that you don't cross thread in the future. But now that you're installing the Terret Stud Kit, you only need to do this once so they install smoothly. Everything you need to chase the threads for this install is in this kit and you can find a link down in the description. It's an Amazon Associates link, so after clicking that link, anything you buy helps support the channel and I thank you for your efforts. To chase the holes for the caliper studs, you need the 12 by 1.5 chaser and for the brake line stud kit, you'll need the 6 by 1.0 thread chaser. Before using the kit, clean out the holes, blow across them or use some compressed air and then maybe some brake cleaner to clean out any further grease or grime. After that, you can run the chaser all the way down in the hole. If it becomes a little tough, unscrew it so it can dump out any of that debris, blow it out, and then screw it back in. Try to go all the way down smoothly. If it gives you any resistance, you can use a wrench on it, but don't use a lot of torque. You may be crossing those threads. All right, now let's get those caliper studs installed. I bought a kit for both axles, and to my surprise, the longer studs are not for the front, they're for the back. And you can always compare with the bolts and check the part numbers on the packaging. You should be able to screw the stud all the way into the collar. Because the studs are smooth, it's hard to get a good grip on them to install them completely. So you're gonna wanna use the two nut method to install them. Install one of the included nuts onto the stud and then a second one right up against it, holding tight with friction. Use the hex nuts, do not use the 12 point nuts that are included in the kit. On the stud, use the finer, shorter set of threads to go into the knuckle. Apply a few drops of Loctite on the threads and install the stud. Some think you need the Loctite to cure a bit first, but it actually cures with a lack of air, so go ahead and install it right away. Now we'll use that two nut method. Take a 17 millimeter wrench and a 17 millimeter socket and tighten the two nuts together so there's lots of friction between them. Now you can work on only the outer nut and it will turn the entire assembly to fully seat that stud. These don't take a lot of torque, it's only five foot pounds, so basically just get it seated fully. To remove your two nuts, get your wrench and your socket and then turn the nuts the opposite direction so they break free from one another. Then you can remove them from the stud. Now repeat the same procedure for the lower stud with the Loctite, screw it in, two nut method, torque it to five foot pounds. Now we just gotta let that Loctite cure, which is plenty of time to start on the brake line stud kit or move on to another caliper. I'll take this time to go to the rear caliper. The steps are exactly the same, except on the rear caliper, you need a T55 Torx to remove the caliper bolts. Remove the caliper, clean out the holes, chase the threads, add Loctite, install the studs. Torque them down with the two nut method to five foot pounds. All right, while the caliper cures, let's install the brake line stud kit. Everything you get here, you get your Loctite, washers, studs, nuts, and instructions. Just like the calipers, start by cleaning the holes and chasing them. One of these I actually had to get a wrench on and go in and out with because there was some debris. Terret gives you just enough Loctite to get these jobs done, so be careful with it. And if you run out, no problem, you can use this. It's Loctite 243. It's in a red bottle, but the juice inside is blue. According to the instructions, you should have about two threads sticking out the top of the nut, followed by a washer underneath that, and then it'll be the brake line bracket attached to the knuckle. The end that has the two threads sticking out is the top. It has the three millimeter hex hole. Apply Loctite to the opposite end of the stud and no need for the two nut method here because you got the hex keyhole. 
Install the studs into the knuckle. If you need to put the brake line bracket in place to see how deep you need to set the studs, go ahead and do so. Just don't torque it down until the Loctite is dry. All right, that looks pretty good there. Apply the Loctite to the other stud, install it, make sure the depth is right. This one here is almost set. It could probably go down another millimeter. Take a look at the brake line bracket and how thick it is. This looks good. I'll leave it here like this until it's time to torque it down. Those will need 20 minutes to cure, so I'll go ahead and do the rear, clean out the holes, chase them, install the studs, and make sure they are at the proper depth. Alongside this installation, I'm also installing new Paragon two-piece slotted rotors on the GT4. Paragon is now making Porsche brake components. Although I haven't put them through their paces yet, I think they're gonna be a great alternative to some of the more expensive two-piece slotted rotors on the market. I've made a whole video reviewing and installing these, so be sure to check that out. Link up in the corner or one down in the description and at the end of this video. And now my favorite part of having Terret studs. I can install the caliper without fear of cross-threading the holes, and I don't have to worry about hanging on to that heavy caliper while I try to line up the bolt holes. You just slide the caliper over the studs. However, it is a tight fit, so you'll need to work it and make sure that it's fully in contact with the knuckle and there's plenty of threads sticking out for your nuts. Install one washer over each stud and then install the 12 point nut. You wanna use a 12 millimeter 12 point socket, not a six point socket. Kind of like installing wheel bolts, I suggest you tighten the top one a little bit, then the bottom one, and then go back and do final torque on the top and bottom. The torque you're using is 54 foot-pounds. By now, your brake line bracket studs should be cured, so install the bracket, the washer, and the nut. Even with the studs, the brake line bracket is a bit of a pain to get over the studs, but at least now you don't have to worry about cross-threading those bolts and holes. Then torque down the nuts on the studs to only five foot pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench that small, it's just snug with a small wrench. Quickly, I'll take you to the rear and show you what's different. We'll get that Paragon rotor installed and then get the caliper on. Putting the caliper back on the studs in the rear is pretty much the same, except one thing, it's a really tight fit to get up and over those studs. So you gotta find a way to find more slack. And one thing I did was remove this T30 screw here, and that gave me what I needed to get over the studs. Now slide the caliper over the studs and put your washers, your 12 point nuts, and torque them down to 54 foot pounds. Replace that T30 screw and then finish up the brake line stud install by putting on the washers and nuts and torquing them down after they're cured. These studs are so great, they're going to save you so much time and headache by not having to try to get those bolts in straight. Now for your old hardware, I suggest you put it aside, although Porsche says the caliper bolts should be replaced. I'll just keep some extra hardware in storage. All right, the Terret caliper stud kit is in, as well as the brake line stud kit. Both of them are fantastic, but I tell you, you gotta at least get that brake line stud kit. Now, I admit that the first time I looked through the instructions, I kinda had to wrap my head around it, but once you do the first one, you get it. It's pretty simple, and I hope this video made it more clear for you. If that's the case, be sure to hit the like button, consider subscribing, and hit the bell to be notified of other great Porsche content. Thank you so much for watching the Jet Fuel channel. We'll see you next time.